Chapter Nine of And Thus He Came by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Nine: The Forgiver of Sins. I say unto thee, until seventy times seven. A priest, for Christ's sake, a priest! Moaned the man a white-faced sister of charity upon whom had developed the appalling task of caring for the long rows of wounded at the dressing station before they were entrained and sent south to the hospital hovered over the stretcher my poor man she whispered there is no priest here i can't die without confession absolution was the answer a priest get me a priest next to and almost touching the cot on which the speaker writhed in his death agony lay another man apparently in a profound stupor he wore the uniform of a private soldier and his eyes were bandaged his face had been torn to pieces by shrapnel fragments of which had blinded him at that instant he came out of that stupor perhaps the familiar words recalled him to himself he moved his hand slightly the sister saw his lips tremble and she bent low who seeks confession absolution he whispered i am a priest you are wounded dying father how can i die better than shriving a fellow sinner that was true the heroic woman turned to the man who still kept up his monotonous appeal the man next to you she said dying like you is a priest father cried the first man with sudden strength i must confess before i die lift me up said the priest the woman slipped her arm about his shoulders and raised him the sister began the other i shall be blind and deaf said the woman speak on whispered the priest i have been a great sinner there isn't time to confess all what is heaviest upon your soul my son a woman's fate ah there were two who loved her a dozen years ago she preferred me i took her away did you marry her no and then we quarrelled i deserted her when i came to seek her she was gone young innocent penniless alone in paris i have sought her and never found her what is your name asked the priest suddenly with a fierce note in his quivering voice father can i be forgiven answered the man giving his name the dying soldier stared anxiously up at his bandaged comrade at the nun who had hid her face behind the shoulder of the priest he noticed that her body was shaking and the woman's name the priest suddenly sat upright he shook off the sister's restraining hand he tore the bandage from his own face he bent over the dying man as he murmured the woman's name wretch he cried look at me his face was gashed and cut and torn but something remained by which the other recognized him you he cried shrinking away i loved her too said the priest i would have married her when she went away with you holy church received me mercy cried the soldier uplifting his hand what mercy did you show her the priest could not see but he could feel his hand seized the other's throat my father interposed the nun he has confessed god will forgive even as i who are you asked the blind priest fearfully the woman cried the dying man shaking off the other's hand and lifting himself up the sight came back to the priest on the instant the fierce agony that filled his blinded eyes seemed to give place to the gentle touch of a hand upon them he seemed to hear a mighty word a feta that meant be opened light flooded his soul looking up he was aware of two figures one of the twain an old man grey-bearded was appealing to the other clad in white raiment and youthful and the priest suddenly recalled an old and well-known story of a fellow-servant who would not have mercy father forgive whispered the man before him 
as the voice of the dying sinner died away in the silence all was dark again the priest saw no more but the horrible pain in his eyes did not return over his torn features came a look of calm he lifted his arm his wavering hand cut the air in the sign of the cross absolvo te he murmured as he pitched forward dead upon the breast of the dying and the woman tenderly covered them over end of chapter nine